And you're listening to Top Story and Blessed to them. Perhaps one of the most derided concepts in our political landscape is uh, ex gratia payment. Seen as part of the end of service benefits for a setting defined class of public servants, uh, particularly the political class. At the beginning of a new parliament, uh, when these payments are made to all MPs and the executive arm of government uh, from the previous parliament, whether or not uh, they've returned to the House after uh, elections, uh, the nation rises in collective angst and breeds at the payments uh, of such mouth-watering figures. Well, today, the former president, John Mahama, who has been himself a beneficiary of this concept as a, as a former MP, former vice president, and former head of state himself, is promising to deal with the matter and scrap it if elected as the next president of the republic he made the pledge today at the launch of his presidential bid listen we'll reduce significantly the size of government and as announced in my speech at the upsa late last year in a crisis situation like this it is my belief that this country can be governed of, uh, efficiently with 60 ministers and deputy ministers we will initiate and undertake the most far-reaching constitutional, political and governance reforms under the Fourth Republic, which will be aimed at restoring confidence in our democracy and governance systems while making life easier and better for the people of Ghana. We'll continue and bring to con conclusion the constitutional review process that was begun by the late President Atta Mills, which will include a review of the controversial Article 71 to reduce the number of office holders under Article 71 and reduce the disparities in privileges and monuments vis-à-vis -vis the public sector and civil service. The payment of ex gratia to members of the executive under Article 71 will be scrapped. And the necessary constitutional steps to abolish that payment will start in earnest in 2025. We will also begin the process of persuading the other arms of government, other than the executive, to accept the removal of these ex gratia payments. Issues pertaining to the ex excessive powers of the president, proper separation of powers, strengthening of parliament, restoring the independence of the judiciary, independent and quasi-independent state institutions and depoliticizing them will take center stage of the new administration. Well, so it is confirmed that John Mahama will be in the race now. The former president is still talking about national matters. He believes that the country is at a crossroad and requires a bold and decisive leadership capable of rescuing the country from what he describes as the clueless new patriotic party administration describing the country's economy as broke the former president accused the government of acting in bad faith in the matter of the domestic debt exchange program the unthinkable has happened and our country today is broken on all fronts ghana is bankrupt we are saddled with debts we simply cannot pay and we have suffered the global humiliation of defaulting on our debts and being downgraded by all credit rating agencies to the lowest level ever seen in our history our economy is in the worst ever shape with suffering and pain on an unprecedented level hyperinflation and ever-increasing price of basic items, including food products, have all combined to inflict unbearable pain on millions of Ghanaian households. Parents are being forced to make the choice between seeking prompt health care for their sick children or providing meals with their meager resources for their families. Our middle class stands the real risk of being wiped out on the back of an obnoxious debt restructuring program. The poor who depend on the middle class for employment and sustenance are on their own and uncertain of their fate in the future. Our aged pensioners and the elderly have not been spared either. In the past few weeks, they have been compelled to stage public manifestations outside the Ministry of Finance in defense of their livelihoods 
even in this elderly state, who would have thought that Ghana will come to a juncture like this, where a government would mete out such shabby treatment to our senior citizens, whose only crime is that they put their life savings in what is considered the safest financial instrument in the world, government bonds. We are this most depressing phase in our history where our economy has been destroyed because of the systematic mismanagement, misguided and clueless policy choices and the incompetence of President Nana Akufuado and his Vice President Mahmoudou Baumia. While our people struggle to keep their heads above water, government officials continue to exhibit high levels of greed, corruption, arrogance of power, dishonesty, blatant state capture, and conflict of interest. Well, so John Mahama himself is aware that he's not the only one in this race uh, canvassing for votes across the country, especially from the delegates of the NDC to be its next leader. Uh, because in that context, with, uh, contest with John Mahama is Dr. Kwabena Dufo, a former minister for finance and also a former governor of the Central Bank. Uh, we have Kojo Bonsu, a former mayor of Kumasi, also in this race, and a businessman who we understand uh, is the fourth individual joining the race for the NDC. But for President John Dram Dramani Mahama, he believes that Ghana needs a leader and not someone who wants to use the presidency to experiment. I'm not the kind of leader who derives pleasure from or who can smile at my country's failings, even the failings of my political opponents. As noted by Otto von Bismarck, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. As far as I'm concerned, there's no vindication to be derived from the suffering of the Ghanaian people. I'm offering myself for public office at this time because I appreciate the enormity of the task ahead, owing to the level of damage that has been done to our country by this government. And I also know that such a mountainous task requires a steady, unifying, and experienced hand to build the Ghana we want together. And as I said, this is no time for experimentation. Ghana at this time does not need a try me to leader. Our country at this time urgently needs a leader with an unwavering desire to get things done in a no frills, no thrills, business-like manner. Not one enamored with sloganeering, excessive partisanship, personal comfort, and shallow populism. Ghana's next leader should exercise sound judgment and be able to make the right calls at the right time. A leader who accepts responsibility and works to fix the problem, and not one who shifts blame onto others. The leader should be one whose heart is filled with compassion for the people and who has the humility to connect with and understand the needs of the people he serves. Our country requires a visionary leader who will build a prosperous and progressive Ghana for all Ghanaians and not just a few family and friends. So those are the qualities John Dromani Mahama is referring to as uh, one that the next leader of the country must possess. But he believes that we need to start, first of all, by cracking down and cutting the cost, the waste, uh, when it comes to the expenditure on the political class. I want to bring in uh, Felix Sufusukwachi. He speaks for the John Mahama campaign. He's aide to the former president. Thank you for your time here on Top Story. Uh, John Mahama is being accused tonight of double standards, particularly knowing that this is an individual who served one time as MP, uh, a minister of state, vice president, and then former head of state. Uh, obviously, uh, throughout his public life, he must have enjoyed uh, the Article 71 ex gratia payment. W why should we be taking John Mahama seriously when he makes a solemn pledge that he'll scrap it? Well, I'm surprised about your question. Is it your intention? that merely because something was done in the past, if it is found to be problematic, 
they should not be worked on or mended. Is that the basis of your question? Uh, but, but we know that he's enjoyed it. Uh, this, he's yes, criticizing so saying. Are you proceeding from the premise that merely because something was done in the past, if there is unanimity over the fact that it is no longer helpful, it should remain and that nothing to be done about it. Is that the premise of your question? Otherwise, I see no reason why the mere fact that President Mahama and people like myself and all others who have served in government up until now have been paid as Russia should become a reason why if he promises to scrap what many people consider to be inappropriate payments, he should not be believed. I don't see a basis for your question, to be honest. Uh, but are you aware of the constitutional uh, requirements, the, the, the fact that uh, the president has little to do in terms of uh, the constitutional powers to either change uh, what may have been determined in line with Article 71? He, he, he may not have the power by 2025 to do so once the commission has been formed um, by an existing or a previous president, you're aware? The answer to your question is contained in the speech, essence of which, of which we get played. To begin with, it is not true that it is not within the power of the president to do something about anything in the Constitution. You do know that governments are allowed to initiate the process for constitutional amendment. And that process has to be emanate or emanate from government. In fact, there have been attempts in the past to review aspects of our constitution. At least, under the male Muhammad presidency, we saw the work of the Constitutional Review Commission that recommended the amendments and change of some portions of our constitution. Of course, that process could not be concluded before we left him. We had expected that this government will continue. But back to the issue of our education. You see, strictly speaking, Article 71 does not stipulate that public office holders who are classified under that provision to be paid as Russia. What it says is that they should, their emolument should be determined by a committee appointed by the president. It is these committees over the years who have recommended the payment of as Russia. So if the committees do not recommend the payment of as Russia, it will not happen. Number two, governments have the power to ensure that aspects of the constitution that they deem problematic are amended. Article 71 is an interest provision, that is true. But there are ways that the constitution prescribes how entrenched provisions can be removed or revoked or changed or amended. And that process will be undertaken to ensure that it is done. But if you read President Mohammed speaks carefully, or if you listen to him carefully, he made a point that this scrapping of El Gashira will start with members of the executive. Now, members of the executive are under the direct control and supervision of the president. So he is making a firm commitment that one, the constitution will be amended to reflect demands by overwhelming sections of the public that Article 71 emoluments be reviewed. And with particular reference to S. Garcia payments, they will be scrapped. And then number two, even before the constitution is amended, he guarantees that no member of his executive will take S. Garcia. Indeed, you recall that sometime last year, somebody offended, for instance, returned his S. Garcia payment. Nobody could force him to take S. Garcia if he didn't want to. So similar commitment, a similar stance will be taken by members of the executive under President Mahama until we achieve the objective of amending the whole article in the constitution to reflect the new thing. Right, but, but fellas, also, w- also, will it be, will it be land, far-fetched? Please, w- please w- let me land, please. Yeah, right. In addition to that, President Mahama made the point that he will take steps to ensure that other arms of government over whom he does not have control also are brought on board so that the entire amount of payments under S. Gratia will be scrapped. That will take constitutional amendments. 
And that is what Mr. Mahama has indicated that he is committed to doing. Uh, and I was just a about asking, I mean, since you were talking about the likes of Togu Yapede, for instance, uh, that that's where many believe John Mahama should be showing leadership. W would it be far-fetched to ask the ex-president to return, for instance, some of the benefits is enjoyed, uh, at least First if not all, throughout his public that life? You do not need a conversation deep in ignorance. El Gashia is a lump sum payment, which is paid once. What for the Mama? Is paid now. It's his pension because presidents retire on their salary as pension. You remember that whilst he serves as president, he's not allowed to do any work. So when you go into retirement, you are paid a pension, just like all public sector workers are paid. So apart from the pension, he's not paid anything else. Again, it will be a bit odd to ask that something that has been paid long ago be refunded. If it were paid today, and you, you requested that it would be refunded. That is in order. But it is important that you don't create the impression that as President Obama said today, he is paid as Gacha every time. He is not paid as Gacha every time. He is paid a pension. And all public sector workers are paid pensions. I don't think that anybody has come to that. What people have come to it is the lump sum payments that are made to existing public servants or political office holders when the antenna comes to an end. And that is the conversation that we have. Uh, but but uh, have you put a cost to this um, to see if indeed as a nation we're not just making emotional arguments? The, the fact that no, well, all, uh, it, may, it may not have been uh, such a costly exercise as, as that argument all, has been bad, bandied around. First of all, the payment of s runs into millions of Ghana cities. It is true that it is not that money that will transform the fortunes of this country. But it is extremely important that any measure that can help curb waste and the occupation of public resources is taken to protect the public fair. That is number one. So it is real tangible money that is paid. If that money is not paid, it can be used to cater to the needs of people who, be, who may be more in need of help than after the seven to one of these holders. Let me give you an example. Your station or your network has been running a program you call School of Sin. And I which I learned about three weeks ago that up to 800,000 Ghanaian school children do not have access to death. So any savings that is made on such payment that can be channeled into the procurement of some amount of death for school children, for instance, will be helpful. As I speak to you, for four years running, not a single test book has been supplied by this government to basic school pupils. So savings like that can be channeled into such high priority expenditure, which have tangible benefits for the Ghanaian people. Mm. So we cannot trivialize that much. And then there is a need for leadership to serve or what do you call it, to offer the right examples. If we go into crisis, as we have now, and you ask people to tighten their belts, you indeed expropriate people's savings that they have, they have put into bonds and lent to you. Okay. On, on the basis that you do not have money to pay, mm -hmm. and they endure the pain and sacrifice of losing their livelihood. You cannot have a situation where public office holders who are exiting from government are paid these lump sums. So there's also a certain level of symbolism, which is important, mm. which shows that government officials are not going to live in comfort at a time when the generality of the citizens are suffering. Mm. So there's real tangible gain right. to be made from the cessation of the payment of S. Garcia and other such restructuring that can take place within government and its expenditure. And then there's the moral symbolism, mm. which is important. Right. It sends the right signal to the populace okay. that they are being led properly by but, the government. But, of but, but, but Felix, in, in all of this, there's a question facing John Mahama himself, uh, because he's uh, spoken about it earlier today, that we need a president who would not experiment with the office. If that's the case, um, you have had the opportunity as the NDC to run this country. Why is it now occurring to John Mahama that he needs to scrap the air crash and not do it when Again, he had the your final opportunity? Are quite problematic. You assume that simply because 
something was done in the past. It cannot be discontinued. Why? Before the NDP came to power in 2016, hadn't they been in power between 2001 and 2008? Why did you not ask that all the things that Akufuad was promising? Jo- why jo- had you jo- thought of it? John, before John Mahama is the one, the John Mahama is the one making the promise to us. Yes, but I'm asking you, your network has existed since time memorial. I never heard you ask the MPP or the Akan why they didn't do any of the things they promised to do between 2016 and now. Felix, Again, this is a your, your, candidate, your candidate has First made all, the yes. pledge. He's, yes, he's pledged the point to scrap s I'm asking you, I'm asking you, I'm asking the you a direct question. question you flawed. had the opportunity. Yes. Why didn't I'm you saying that I'm saying that the, the premise of your question is flawed. Because you are saying that merely because the NDC has been in power before, it should have done everything else, including everything else that can be done in the future, within that period that they were in power. That is impossible. Between 2016 and 2024, there are things that cannot be done. It does not mean that those things those things cannot be done between 2025 and beyond. In any event, there's nothing wrong with carrying out reflection and introspection and determining that a number of things that may have been done in the past are no longer suitable going forward. Indeed, it is, it is extremely important to have leaders who are humble enough to acknowledge shortcomings of the past and who commit to do something about them in order to ensure that our country is better run than it has been done in the past. We do not need leaders who are obstinate, who even in the, in the face of glaring evidence that there are shortcomings in governance, insist that they are going to do the same thing. So, your mama is coming with an attitude that says that yes, over the period, at least in the last 30 years that the Fourth Republic has run, there are things that we have done, there are mistakes that have been taken, that have not inured to the benefit of our people. I am willing to ring those far-reaching changes to ensure that life is better for our people than it has always been. And I think this is a noble cause that needs the support of the entire Ghanaian population because mm-hmm. nobody can argue that the current situation we are in is acceptable. We live in terrible times. This government has committed economic atrocities against the people of Ghana. And there's no sane person out there that can argue mm. that what we have now, now is better than what is government inherited. For that reason, there needs to be a change. And if you are going to change, you need an experienced steady hand. Somebody who has seen it all before and who is willing to do new things to ensure that our country is better run and that the uh, outcomes thereof are beneficial Felix, for the rule of this country. Felix, your, your, your candidate, the fear is your candidate may be, I mean, causing some sort of disaffection for himself, especially within the political class, knowing that uh, he needs crucially to, to earn the votes of, for instance, members of parliament who will be beneficiaries of this uh, Article 71 escrow payment. Uh, have you done enough consultations, for instance, uh, I mean, tried... Uh, to engage your MPs in, in Parliament on, on the possibility of scrapping this when you win power? You see, what Ghana has learned for some time is a leader who is bold enough to take those decisions that are beneficial to the people of Ghana, but which may not be beneficial if you consider the parochial interest of a few. You see, we cannot have a leader who pandas to the whims and dictates of the political class at the expense of the people whose resources are used to look after the political class in the first place. Number two, there has been sufficient consultation within the NDC to win the support of everybody who matters in this endeavor. So you will find that, yes, there may be one or two people who may hold disagreements, and all of that is allowed in the competitive political environment. But President Obama remains committed to doing what is right by the people of Ghana and not what is necessarily of interest to you people within some political party. So yes, there may be some in the political class who may be offended. There may even be some in other arms of government who may benefit from the payment of S. But President Mama earnestly believes 
that the interest of the generality of our people is far superior to the interest of a handful of people who increasingly are becoming a burden on the Ghanaian taxpayer. Uh, and I'm grateful for your time tonight. That's uh, Felix Sofosukwachi, his aide to former president John Mahama, who's seeking to make a, a comeback. Well, a lot has been happening uh, tonight that we need to bring to you because in the Volta region, at the very launch of that campaign, the OT regional chairperson of the NDC, John Kujo Japon, is questioning the real motive behind the presidential ambition of hopefuls uh, such as Dr. Kwabana Dufo, who's seeking to be the main contender of John Mahama going into this race. Listen. The next president is also a brother from Kumau, oh, Dr. Dufo. Have you won your seat before? Charity begins at home. Have you won it before? Who should do the monkey job for you to become a president of this country? And he's also my brother. I am an Ashanti, you know, Dufo. He's from Kuma, Kumau. You have never won it. Never have you won the regional chairman. So you see, the campaign, after I've finished with them, the campaign is finished. You don't waste your time. Let's come to Kwajo Bonsu, Oze Bonsu. Ah, he is from Offenso. I'm wondering why the Ashantis are so eager to become president and all this, when they are not doing their homework well. But it's a good brand, you know? The three of them can win the three seats for us. Charity begins at home. Go there and win the seat for us before we can think about you. But if you don't do it and you are showing your face, I mean, you are just giving us troubles. Ladies and gentlemen, NDC respects hard work. We respect commitment. We also respect loyalty. So that's uh, John Japon Kujo. He is uh, the OT regional chairperson of uh, the NDC. Uh, let's uh, get a, a brief remark from the Dufo campaign. Uh, Antonio Ashino speaks for Dr. Dufo. Uh, Antonio, so you've had uh, the chairperson speaking on behalf of a host of others who say they are in for John Dramani Mahama. What's your reaction, briefly? Your listeners. I mean, the gentleman that spoke. Um, I mean, his claims are premised on a lot of ignorance and factual inaccuracy, respectfully. Um, he claims Dr. Dufo should win Kumewu for the NDC. What he doesn't know is that Dr. Dufo's constituency is Sechuafan Plains. The NDC has only four seats in Ashanti region, and Sechuafan Plains, where Dr. Dufo is from, voting at, is an NDC state. Also, the MP, the current MP in that constituency is Dr. Dufo's own blood brother, that same mother, same father. So clearly, um, his claims were premised on a lot of ignorance and enthusiasm, but we can forgive that. Secondly, I mean, Dr. Dufo's contribution to the party is undisputed. He talks about loyalty and hard work. The candidate he supports, the question is, when did, the, when did that candidate join the NDC? Dr. Dufo has been with the NDC, and even as deputy governor, during the founder's time. So uh, everything he says clearly is inaccurate. Again, we heard him say that you have to, within the NDC, you have to be a member of parliament before you can be president. Again, that is factually inaccurate. The founder of the NDC, um, Jerry Rollins, was never a member of parliament. Indeed, his former president, Atta Mills, was never a member of parliament. And even if you are going to go by the member of parliament argument, the candidate he supports is from Damango, as we speak, the MPP holds that mango. The NDC's performance in the northern region, which is the second strong, which is supposed to be the second strongest World Bank for the NDC, right. is the question now. The NPP is sharing that with us. Mm, they okay. have more seats than us. So whatever he's saying, I'm sure um, he doesn't have the facts, but that's the facts I've set out there. Oh, all right, then. Dr. Dufour is from Central Franklin. Central Franklin is an NDC mm. and the current mm. MP is from Dr. Dufour's own house. And indeed, Dr. Dufour's own son is contesting to the MP there. So clearly, they hold that constituency for the NDC 
and in fact, their impact within the region is there for everybody to All see. Right. Uh, okay, uh, that's uh, Antonio Ashinio. He speaks for the Dufo campaign. Thank you. But w- what does government think about the proposal from John Dramani Mahama? Uh, let me bring in uh, Richard Akhangba, his uh, communications director for the New Patriotic Party. Uh, a number of issues, John Mahama taking you on the debt exchange and also asking that we s- scrap the ex gratia payments. Your thoughts briefly on that, sir? Uh, thank you very much. Uh I think that uh, the conversation around uh, the ex is an ongoing conversation. I think uh, Parliament will have to take a look at that. Uh, it's one of those things that I suppose during the constitutional review uh, process, I think it came up. Uh, so it's something that we need to look at in the interest of trying to ensure balance and equity uh, in pay, I think that it has to be looked at and uh, a more creative way found to be able to uh, attend to those category of uh, workers to make sure they feel uh, also taken care of and other class of government workers are also taken care of. So I think that is it's a welcome conversation. I think that is not a new conversation. Um, it's, it's been there. And, I think you're asking because the former president raised that concern today. Uh, the only interesting thing about it is that he doesn't have any credibility as far as discussing that subject matter. He's had a case in as an executive president to act on it. He didn't. He said he was going to do something about it in 2016. He didn't. Uh, it was a difficult economic times where he was uh, mismanaging the economy. Uh, we have had to go to IMF. That was a perfect time for him to have done something about it, but he didn't. So if he's bringing a conversation today, it's a conversation we must have, but not because he will do anything about it. Because if we give him a chance today, he, he will not. He will just talk about it but not do anything about it. But we have to look at that and, and, and deal with it, but not because of our present ways. Okay, then. And I'm grateful uh, for your time. That's uh, Richard Ahyangba, his uh, Director of Communications for the New Patriotic Party ending. Top story. Next is Newsnight.